so what is, I'll start out with National Improved Medicare for All. This is kind of um, a proposal that has been supported by a strong movement nationally for a number of years now. The first um, 21st century piece of legislation that had this was uh, 2003, uh, John Conyers, HR 676, uh, which was a piece of legislation that was based on um, a proposal put together by physicians with the Physicians for National Health Program, a national health policy organization. And, um, and then that legislation ended with uh, John Conyers. One second. What do you need, sweetheart? Okay, I'll have to wait just a minute. Um, okay, so um, so then so Nash, that piece of legislation ended when John Conyers left office, and he since has passed, unfortunately. Uh, but National Improved Medicare for All is a system in which every single person living in the United States would be put immediately, all at once, into a National uh, Improved Medicare for All healthcare system. So you would automatically be enrolled if you showed up at a health uh, facility and you didn't have a card, you were assumed to be in the system, you would get your treatment first, they would sort out the enrollment later. So the opposite of what we have right now, it would be comprehensive covering all medically necessary care uh, as, does, you know, as determined by a health professional and the patient. Patients would be able to go anywhere in the country. So if you're traveling, whatever, if you have an illness and there's an out-of-state facility that specializes in that, you can go there, no questions, you know, no, no barriers to that. People would have free choice of health professional and it would be paid for upfront through progressive taxes and using the healthcare dollars that we're currently using. And so there would be no co-pays, no deductibles, no financial barriers that would keep people from getting health. So that's kind of... Uh, the, in a nutshell, that it's, it's national, it's nationwide, it's improved because current Medicare doesn't cover, you know, things like uh, hearing and vision and dental care and other things that are necessary. So it would be an expanded and improved Medicare type of system and for everyone. And that was thought to be the simplest thing is that we would keep all the providers the same but everyone would, one would be in the system, the government would pay those providers. And in fact, as part of that, which is really important, is that um, the system would use a, a system of uh, paying for operating expenses. So every facility, I will as soon as I finish my talk, okay? Um, every, every health facility would get a global operating budget that they could use. So you wouldn't have to worry about, you know, billing for every Band-Aid and every alcohol wipe. You just focus on treating your population, you're getting the money to cover your facility, cover the supplies that you need, cover the people that work there each month. And then separately, if you needed to expand for some reason or purchase some technology, then that capital expense would be separated out um, so that there could be some control so that you wouldn't have one hospital getting a certain technology and then making a lot of money off of that. And then hospital you know, down the road is like, well, gosh, we have to get one of those. And that's a huge waste of money. If you already have one in the community, you don't need to like have every hospital having the same technology. We would move towards what we call centers of excellence, in fact.